Oh, it was released today. Updated Heisman Trophy betting odds. And University of Oregon quarterback Dylan Gabriel is now the favorite to win the Heisman Trophy at plus 750 odds, according uh, to ESPN Bet and the MGM Grand in the Superbook in Las Vegas as well. Um, the, a, a little bit of a surprise as... He was as low uh, he in beginning of July. He was at ten to one, and he's been as long as a fourteen to one uh, long shot to win the Heisman Trophy. But now he's vaulted up to plus seven fifty in the Heisman Trophy betting odds. Okay, so for some of us betting novices, in the yeah. terms of so he's now plus seven fifty. How does that translate to a ten to one? Um. Okay, that would be I think it's seven to one. Uh. Okay, so ten to one would be what, like a thousand plus a thousand? Yeah. Okay. I believe so. Gotcha. It's a uh well fifteen to two is the fractional odds there. Fifteen to two. Okay, yeah. So that's that's, that's, that's seven and a half to one. Yeah, seven yeah. sure. Okay. There you yeah. go. Perfect. Um he has I mean, and this is quite the jump. And what they're saying is uh ESPN wrote an article about it and they're asking why they believe that. And uh, basically, the whales have come in, and there's been a lot of big money being bet on Dylan Gabriel to win the Heisman Trophy in Vegas. Now, they started taking bets on Gabriel at the beginning of July, and we've seen, I guess this would be like 9 to 1 odds, right? Seven, seven plus 750, right? Well, then we just, it, or is it, you said 15, 15 to 2. two so that's like yeah. 7 and a half to 1. Okay. Yeah. Um, but we've seen this kind of shrink because big money and public money has come in on Dylan Gabriel. And that is because you look at the influential betters, the people that kind of move lines and in, in heavy money coming in. What that does is you have the books will adjust accordingly. And looking at why the betters would come in in, in the, the sharps or whales as they are would come in big on a guy like Dylan Gabriel. I mean, just look at his career yards. In last year, he threw for 3,600 yards and 30 touchdowns. Um, very effective at, at the University of Oklahoma mm -hmm. uh, a year ago. But he also has a track record. Dude is thrown for 3,000 yards in college four years now. That's not too shabby. Four times he has crossed the 3,000-yard mark. And with COVID, okay. he's still got seven years of eligibility. <laughs> right. <laughs> still got one more. And when you look at, he has... Four seasons of 25 or more touchdowns. Two seasons of 30 or more. And then one where it was 29. Huh? Yeah. What are you doing here? Yeah. What are you doing? Round up. And then a 25 <laughs> uh, touchdown season. His sophomore year back in 2020, for God's sakes. <laughs> so you look at the, the metrics completion percentage. He's hovering like around 65% for his career in completion percentage racks up a ton of yards, touchdowns, doesn't throw a lot of picks over his career. I don't think he's ever thrown double-digit interceptions. Mm -hmm. I think the most he's ever had is eight. Uh, no, seven is the most he's ever had his freshman year wow. at Central Florida. So you look at the metrics, we'll say, okay, he's a reliable passer. He's going to be on a good team. Oregon is a team that is favored to be in the college football playoffs, 12-team 12, 12 field. Also, you're, you're looking at potential Big Ten winner in that regard. And when you get good value on that, that's where the sharps are going to start pumping that money towards it. I think a lot of it also comes out of the hype that Oregon's receiving room is getting, you know, we had pro football focus uh, rated them as the number one receiver room in the country. The CBS sports uh, poll re had Oregon as the number one receiver room in the country. And I, I've been banging this drum since spring ball. Oregon is about eight deep in pass catchers. Whether when you take the wide receivers, in the tight ends together. They've got eight guys that they feel high level, very comfortable. Losing a guy like Troy Franklin is a big one. You bring in Evan Stewart. You bring back Tez Johnson. You also have Treshawn Holden coming back this year. And then you add in guys like Terrence Ferguson, where the safety blanket. I think what they're saying is a very good team in Oregon and a quarterback that is going to put up big numbers if he stays healthy, that's where that money is coming in on. Which of those new, uh, or not necessarily new, but which of those pass catchers do you think can come in and, and come closest to being a, a wide receiver one a, Evan like Stewart. Franklin? Evan Stewart. Yeah. Evan Stewart, the Texas A&M transfer, is a guy that you, 
he he had a couple of plays in the spring game, which is what most people are going off of. But when you go behind the scenes, when you go and you watch their practices, and when you talk to people that were there at every single practice, he is the real deal. Evan Stewart is that dude, and he is a wide receiver one. He will high point the ball. He's a crisp route runner. He has uh, the ability to stretch a, a defense vertically, and he is a wide receiver one kind of prototype type guy. Um, then you have Tez Johnson, mm-hmm. who you will put in the slot, and he's one of the fastest guys in college football. Yeah. I mean. That doesn't hurt to have. He is lightning fast, and we saw last year the transition it, from Troy and kind of working his way up as the season went on, he became more and more of a factor in their offense and mm-hmm. became more and more dynamic. And they figured out ways to scheme him open. And Bo Nix, obviously, the connection that those two had had going back to high school, it was apparent that he is a get-open receiver and he can stretch you vertically and horizontally when he takes you across the field. Um, Tez Johnson is that dude. And then you have plenty of red zone targets as well. And there, there's very high optimism for guys like, you know, jury on Dickey, Kenyon Sadiq, the tight end who had a phenomenal spring. I think that when you look at where the sharp money is going with Dylan Gabriel for the Heisman, that's where they get to that point is that, all right, it's going to be a, a good team that is relevant. And he is going to put up some crooked numbers when you look at the the game to game. Obviously, you know, the things that that factor into this are the preseason favorite very rarely wins the Heisman Trophy. Yeah. (laughs) You know, I went back and I was just looking this up um, when I saw it. You go, all right, so last year, preseason favorite overwhelmingly was Caleb Williams at USC. He was Mm -hmm. the defending Heisman Trophy winner. And, of course, Jaden Daniels comes in from LSU, and he was plus 1,100 at the beginning of the year. Yeah. And he, in preseason, plus 1,100, he ends up taking home the hardware. You go back to 2022 season, C.J. Stroud at Ohio State was the guy that everybody was pointing to. Caleb Williams ended up, you know, taking that that trophy and just ripping it away. Because, mm-hmm. look, here's the thing, is all of this is going to change if Dylan Gabriel doesn't have a good performance against Ohio State, right. if he falters against Michigan. In the marquee games, you have to step up and you have to put up those big numbers, right? Yeah. And, you know, guys that overcome the the a loss or two in winning the Heisman Trophy, it's everybody goes to, well, they didn't lose that game because of him. You right. know, he put up the great numbers and they still ended up losing. That's what Jaden Daniels was to a T last year was, well, it wasn't his fault that they lost football games. It's like, well, they also went out of their way to pad his stats at the end of the year yeah. and dum dums that vote are like, Ooh, big numbers. <laughs> Me like, you know, he can run and throw <sighs> vote Heisman. Uh, you go back to 2021 Spencer Rattler. He was the, he was the preseason Heisman favorite. Ooh. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Bryce young won that one. Yeah. And he had nine to one odds. And then in 2020, Justin Fields, the Ohio state quarterback was the preseason favorite. That went to Devonte Smith out of Alabama. Because you are a preseason favorite, it means nothing to you winning the Heisman Trophy. But when you look at kind of how we get to this point, that's how you can see it. I mean, you have guys put up gaudy numbers. He's thrown for over 10,000 yards in college football in his career. He is on a good team, and they have weapons that universally people agree the Oregon Ducks receiving core and their offense as a whole, whether you look at the offensive line, the running back room, the Oregon Ducks will be potent offensively. Mm-hmm. Quarterback, yep, we're going to go there. We're going to do it. And look, if you don't think that there will be a storyline of a Hawaiian quarterback going to the University of Oregon, wearing the number eight, <laughs> <laughs> and having a great year, yeah. people are going to just point back to Marcus Mariota and say, Oh, we love this story. And so there's going to be a, a level of hype around that as well. But if I am telling if I'm sitting here on July 12th, 2024 and saying Dylan Gabriel's going to be the Heisman Trophy winner, there are so many variables that could happen that could torpedo any Heisman campaign. Just look at the history which will tell you the preseason favorite is never the guy who wins the Heisman Trophy, or very rarely does that happen in college football. That's why we put up a poll at Danny and Dusty 
on Twitter this Yacht Rock Friday. Who will win the Heisman Trophy? If it is other, please re- uh, reply in the comments. You got Dylan Gabriel, University of Oregon, Carson Beck, Georgia, Quinn Ewers, Texas, or Jackson Dart from Ole Miss. Those are your options. So please go and vote. And oh, by the way, those are the top four in the preseason odds right now. Dylan Gabriel plus 750, Carson Beck plus 800, Quinn Ewers plus 900, and then Jackson Dart at plus 1500. Um, I also think that when you look at the hype going into this year, I don't think there is a clear cut heading into this year that people are pointing to. And and that's where you're going to see people with value go, okay, we saw value in Dylan Gabriel. Big money went that way. Mm Mm-hmm. I have a feeling this year especially, it's going to change. It's going to flip-flop a lot. Well, it's funny because last year going into the season, it felt like Caleb Williams was going to be head and shoulders above everybody else. And then yeah. what happened? Well, like you wouldn't go into last season thinking like it's this year where we don't really have a clear cut. You know what is what's fascinating to me is that they have the top t- 10 in the Heisman voting mm-hmm. on ESPN. Shadur Sanders is not one of them. The, I mean, you think of the hype train, it means a lot. Yeah. And if the hype train does not seem to be following Colorado, which got picked to finish 10th in the Big 12. But as Shador Sanders said, every game is every other team's Super Bowl for us. Yeah. Well, wait, but 12th and in the Big 12 is no longer last place. Don't they have 16 It's now? 10. It's 10. Yeah, 10 out of 16. So oh, okay. not, not quite the bad. Gotcha. Not, not quite yeah. the bottom there. Um. So Not go ahead and vote. Bad. No, <laughs> go ahead and vote at uh, Danny and Dusty on Twitter. Dylan Gabriel, the Heisman Trophy frontrunner as we sit in July 12th, 2024.